Hello. Well, thanks so much. I appreciate um, being able to be here with you all. I'm I'm so, so excited for you. Congratulations on getting selected and getting to the stage. And so now we got to prepare you, right? We got to do this thing. We got to we got to just not give a talk. We got to give the most incredible talk uh, of all time. Uh, so I'm excited to show you some tips and some some things on that front. But I'm I don't know if you guys have done any like um, research on how I start these things. Uh, but I always like to start with a little bit of energy. I have intro music, and if you feel like jamming out with me, like you should do it because I just start with a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Here we go. Come on. Oh, Krista, you are my hero. I am just, did you see, she was in it. Daniel was like, I'm oh, not so sure, not so sure. But Krista, like, she doesn't even know me. And she was like, let's get down. Um, love it. Love everything about it. Uh, we'll do it again, Steve. So you'll have an opportunity to to also. Hey, I even took the hat off, man. You see that? <laughs> It's like, I was getting, I was, I was doing it. I was with you. Come on now. Come on now. Uh, all right. No shame in this game, y'all. I'm with you. Um, let me, let me go ahead and share my screen and we're just going to jump right into this thing. So, okay. Slideshow. You did it, y'all. Let's write this talk. Here's what we're going to cover today. Okay. Uh, we're going to cover the form of uh, a TED talk. Uh, yes, there are different ways to do it, but I'm going to give you like the basic form of it and the ingredients that have to be there for it to be um, a, an awesome talk. And then we're going to identify problem. And so this is a part of every talk uh, that you need to know about. And then we're also going to talk about writing your through line. If you're not familiar with that term, don't worry, I'm going to go through it here. So, so today, these are the bullet points that we're going to cover form of the TED Talk, identifying the problem, and writing your through line. Totally doable today. And you're going to walk away knowing what your through line is and the shape of your talk. All right. So a little bit about me. I know Stephanie told you some stuff, but essentially I started my career as a stand-up comedian. So I got to uh, share the stage with George Lopez and uh, Kid and Play, and if you don't know who Kid and Play is, you know, we can't be friends, but that's okay. We, you can still, you know, be on this call. That's fine. Um, and I was I was even on Comedy Central, and I did, I was in some movies and stuff. No movies that you've probably heard of, but they're, they're out there. Um, so this was the foundation of kind of, you know, me. Um, and that kind of shifted then. For some reason, I just started to feel like, disconnected from my audience. I felt like I wanted to say more, but I didn't know how to do that um, in standup. Um, so I wanted to connect with people. So what I did to kind of like find myself again was I started teaching comedy. And I started teaching at the the, the local college. Uh, I was in Colorado at the time, I was at Colorado College. And I started teaching this course to undergraduate students that became like wildly popular. It would it would, uh, people were on waiting lists to get to it, right? And then, so we did a community version of it uh, where anybody from the community could come to the Fine Arts Center. And essentially you would you would join my class and I would teach you how to create five minutes of original standup from your life, right? So the premise of it was, mm -hmm. this is authentic. This is you, this is your story. This is your life in five minutes of standup. Mm -hmm. And the shows sold out for three years straight. I thought that I would be getting people in there that wanted to be stand-up comedians, but that was almost never the case. It was just people who wanted to say something that liked stand-up and saw it as a medium. And so this is to say, like, there are many different stages. There are different ways to share a message, to tell a story. Uh, and each medium kind of has its form, right? What I learned there was something really cool that I decided to take and turn into a keynote speech, which is the power of connecting with people through humor. I created this keynote 
that that eventually turned me into a full-time speaker completely by accident like these things sort of came into place from there i got asked to be a speaker coach at multiple tedx events i got to travel um, all over the world three different continents and eventually created um, my own business where i essentially write uh, speeches for folks and i also help folks land and deliver their TEDx talks and uh, their keynote speeches. And so that's that's entirely what I do today. So this is my mentorship community. These are some folks, some wonderful souls that you know, either landed their talk and have already delivered it or they're working towards it. And so that's that's a community that that I've that I've built. It's just called the TEDx mentorship community. I also have a Facebook group called TEDx Speakers. You're welcome to join it. I have a, a newsletter that goes out every month as well. Okay. Oh, and shameless plug. I got a book um, coming out, which I'm super excited about. I'm probably changing the title, but anyway, I have to, I have to just, you know, share what's happening in my life, people. Come on. So here's the kind of process that I want to share with you that we go through, which is there's, there's got to be some kind of like extraction about you and what stories you're going to tell. Now, you may have heard like a TED Talk is not a personal story. And that's true. It's not just your story from beginning to end. Okay. It's not like, hey, you know, this thing happened to me and now um, I'm better for it. I'm inspirational. Mic drop the end. That would be like a motivational style speech, which there are plenty of stages for, right? Like, those are great. In fact, their motivational talks are the ones that get booked the most. But TED is different. It wants to differentiate itself. So how do we do that? Well, we have to be able to uh, identify the problem. We need a through line that carries through and we need to know who we're talking to. So part of the process that, that I go through with all my clients is identifying all of these things. And that's what we're going to um, do in a in a tight uh, timeline today. Um, the special sauce of sort of like the work that I do, I would say is really focused on short form. So because TED Talks these days are only 10 to 12 minutes, this is a short form talk. Like this is probably one of the shortest talks that can still be called a talk, you know? Otherwise it would just be like a, a toast or something, you know? Um, I love the short form. Uh, this is from stand up and having to get to the the punchline as fast as fast as you can. The you other thing, you, oh, what was that? You might have asked me just a quick question. Oh, go for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're going to get to this. But Eric Edmonds was talking about how when he gives a when he gives a talk, the shorter the talk is, the more time it requires for him to prepare. Is that true? <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, you know. Um, I can't remember. There's a famous quote that was like, I wanted to write you a, a short yeah, letter, yeah, yeah. but I didn't, I didn't have enough time. So I, I wrote you a long one. <laughs> <clears throat> and yeah, I would say the, the beauty of doing a, a Ted talk is also being able to distill your idea down into something brief and powerful. And some of my favorite talks are actually, you know, five minutes, seven minutes. Um, Derek Sivers did one that's like three minutes on like how to start a movement or something like that, um, which I think is brilliant, right? So the the point is, though, that there's also um, a part of this that has to be your voice. There's um, there's there's I think when we get scared about the stage, um, a lot of times it's because we start telling ourselves, oh, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. Who am I? Um, this isn't special. There's some version of it out there, blah, 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 blah. Quiet that noise, because if you have something to say, it doesn't matter how many times it's been said and how many versions of it there are. Mm -hmm. You're on this planet for however long you're on it for you're a unique person with a unique experience and you're going to be able to reach people that other people can't. So let's just get those voices out of our head right now. This is a, a powerful short form talk that has a message in your voice. End of story.
And that's what we're going to create. All right. So this section is called Titan TED Talks. This uh, is essentially what a TED Talk looks like, everybody. I'm big on visuals. I'm a visual kind of learner. And so I needed something to just kind of just say, all right, what is this thing? There's essentially three parts to it. We'll call it intro, body, conclusion. There's a hundred different things that other people call it, but this is what made sense to me. It opens with some kind of, we'll call attention getter. So that's either a startling statement a question or a story of some kind, a short, you know, story. The, what I want to say here is that the purpose of whatever you open with is to lead us to the problem. So it's not just that we're grabbing attention. It's that it opens us up to showing the audience what the problem is. There's different ways to do it. Like you can you can grab attention real quick, one sentence, here's the problem, and then prove it. Or you could tell a story and build up to this moment where you're like, and here's the problem. So there's going to be different forms of it. But just so you know, grab your audience, tell us what the problem is, because guess what? We're human beings. If there's no problem, there's, there's often no interest. Like it, we're just kind of like, where is this going? Okay, from there, I'll show you in a minute, but this is usually where the through line goes, not always. We build the problem, we then introduce like the solution or maybe what the big idea is. Somehow we're going to give you our insight into how to solve this problem or you know, how to think differently about it or how like a new vision for what, what we could be doing instead. In here, there's usually some kind of wrap and summary, but it's often a story, a second story, if you had, an, if you had one in, in the beginning. And sometimes, sometimes it's a hero story where you lift up somebody else. Um, it can't be you. And so what I want to say in here is that you can't be the hero of your own story. And I know that sounds kind of like basic, but it, it it's like the most tempting, tempting thing to do when we get in there to start creating our talk. It's just, I don't know. I don't know why it happens, but essentially, you know, we build ourselves up and we need to remember that we're not the hero. We're like, we're the guide. We're the wise one. We're not Luke Skywalker. We're Yoda. OK, so if you can remember that, that's going to put you in a great spot to know what voice you should be speaking in. So let's say we do a hero story here where we lift somebody else up. Maybe it's somebody who inspired us or whatever, somebody who lives this solution. The last thing, the reason we do that is because there's an emotional pull usually here that then opens us up to actually being able to take action on what you want us to take action on. So as you know, um, most TED Talks will end with some kind of call to action. It's very specific. It's kind of like, they might even say, I have three calls to action for you, or here's my call to action, or here's what I want you to do, okay? And it could be like the first step, or it could be like, Hey, if you're in this bucket, this is what I want you to do. If you're in this bucket, this is what I want you to go and do next. And that's it. That's a TED Talk. It's sort of like it's sort of like the introduction of of a new vision. It's sort of like the beginning of realizing that there could be a different or better way. It's like creating a new world right in front of us and saying like, all right, now let's go out and change the world. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is talk to you about through line, but I realized I just tossed a bunch of stuff out there. So if there's any quick questions about like this shape or form, I'll take those now.
Everybody's got it. Everybody's with me. Okay, cool. All right, well, let's keep rolling with it then. All right, so what is through line? All right, so this is <clears throat> this is directly from Chris Anderson, head of TED. This is his quote. There's a helpful word used to analyze plays, movies, and novels. It applies to talks too. It is through line the connecting theme that ties together each narrative element. Every talk should have one. Okay, bing, 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 got it. I need one of these. So through line is essentially, it's the point of your talk. It's like your thesis statement. So <clears throat> if you're my age, you learned that, you know, somewhere in grade school, like, I don't know, probably, probably in some science thing we were supposed to write. What is your thesis statement? Maybe, maybe English. Who knows? I gotta see. Um, the the every example shown in in your talk, whether whatever story you pick, whatever examples you choose, you have to ask yourself: Does this tie back to my through line? Does this prove what I'm trying to say? Does it support it? If not, you have to cut it. And that's why it's one of the most useful tools is that so many of us want to say so much or we want to make sure that this story gets into because it's so good um, or whatever, whatever reason that we tell ourselves to keep something in, this is sort of the, the barometer to tell us, does it tie back to the through line? And if it doesn't, cut it. Through line is essentially what you want your audience to leave with. So let's say, you know, somebody walks out of your talk and they bump into their friend and they were like, oh my God, I wanted to see Edwards talk so bad. I saw him, you know, at the baseball game doing the national anthem and I didn't get to blah, blah, blah. What was his talk about? They should be able to say in a sentence, what was it, what it was about. And if they can do it, you did your job. All right, so again, it guides your talk. It makes it enjoyable and impactful. Here's a couple of examples. So vulnerability should be treasured, not hidden from. Who is that, y'all? Someone that lives life on the edge. <laughs> Bre Brene Brown. Hey, there you Please. go. There you go. See, all right. I probably could have stopped at vulnerability and you would have been able to identify that it was Brene Brown. Like that's how powerful a through line can be. That's how powerful a TED talk can be, right? She owns this word vulnerability. It was, it was the perfect talk at the perfect time. And she created an, an empire out of it. It's got like what, 70, 80 million views now. I don't know. It's, it's wild. We've we've all seen it. If you haven't, don't be embarrassed, Steve. It's fine. You can go watch it later. No big deal. You want to know something? I did watch it. I did when I was getting ready for my talk last time. I watched a lot of them, like Simon Sinek, Renee Brown. Oh my gosh, there's so many talented speakers. And I don't uh -huh. want to make this about me. I just want to interject this really fast. I'm so <laughs> glad that you just touched on that point about about what you want your audience to lead with because I really struggle. Uh, there's so I just want to say too much, you know. Uh, I, I I'm guilty of always wanting to make too many points instead of reining it back in and staying really tight. But I love the fact you just said like focus on that one thing. Like if someone were to be asked right out like you know later in the day what was the talk about, they can encapsulate it really fast. Yes. So I, I really like that. Good. I'm so glad that resonates. All right. So that's Brene Brown. Here's another one. Um, lesser known talk, but still amazing. Uh, this, this through line goes like this. More choice actually makes us less happy. Anybody? Are there any, are there any Ted, like, um, Ted heads out there that have, that have, that have heard this talk before? Okay, I've totally heard this talk, but I cannot tell you who it is. And I agree with it so much <laughs> that, you know, it's like the dark chocolate metaphor. Right. Okay. So uh, it's called The Paradox of Choice by Barry oh, Schwartz. Yeah. 
it's a, it's a great, great talk. Really, really solid. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Um, really good. The, the, so here's what I want to say about these. All right. If you, if you notice, they are essentially the shortest version of a talk. They move. They move us from what is to what could be or should be, right? It's a break in belief. It's a break in, um, it's problem solution. It's, it's, I think the best way to say it is it's the shortest version of your talk. And so when you can distill an idea down to this, you'll start, you'll start communicating better in everything, whether that's, uh, I don't know, going live uh, on social media, media, whether that's a work presentation, whatever, this is a powerful skill to have. All right. <clears throat> so let's, let's kind of see these things in action. So we've seen the form. We've seen the through line. Um, let's go ahead and, and pick some things apart here. So this talk is uh, by Julia Dar. It's called How to Disagree Productively and Find Common Ground. She's like a five-time world debate champion or something like this, which um, is cool. Uh, didn't know it was a thing, which she talks about. Uh, and and uh, she does this thing in the beginning where she basically gives us it's really brilliant. She gives us like all the ingredients of the talk right away. And one of the reasons why this is such a powerful form is that we live in a very noisy world with a lot of media. Um, and if we don't, if we don't get it right away, then we move on. So let's check it out real quick and we'll, we'll find the, the ingredients that we're, that we were just talking about. Some days it feels like the only thing we can agree on is that we can't agree on anything. Public discourse is broken. Oh, okay. That took her all of five seconds. And basically what she did was she gave us the startling statement, which was um, some days it feels like, uh, oh God, I can't remember how she said it. And then she says, public discourse is broken which is the problem. So startling statement, directly into problem. We already have two elements of those ingredients that we need in the first five seconds of her talking. Then what does she do? And we feel that everywhere. Panelists on TV are screaming at each other. We go online to find community and connection, and we end up leaving feeling angry and alienated. Now she's building the problem, another ingredient that we have to have. In everyday life- Are you playing something? I can't hear it. I don't know if anyone else is having trouble hearing it. Oh, sorry. Is anybody else having that experience? I missed the intro por portion of it, but now I can hear it for some reason. Oh, okay. Mm, I can hear the whole thing. Can hear. Yeah, I can hear it too. Weird. Okay, okay thank you. Sorry, Brianna. Um, I don't know. Let me see if I can crank it up a little bit over here on my end. Nope, it's all the way up. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, I think I've done everything I can do. It's okay. okay. Maybe I'll hear it if I play it back when the recording comes out. No worries. Let's let's back it up anyway, just because. Somebody else said they didn't get that front part. So let's let's listen to the front part again. The thing we can agree on is that we can't agree on anything. The only thing we can't can agree on is that we can't agree on anything. Public discourse is broken. Public discourse is broken. Startling statement and then hits us with the problem. Now let's build the let's agitate the problem. Let's build it further. 
And we feel that everywhere. Panelists on TV are screaming at each other. We go online to find community and connection, and we end up leaving feeling angry and alienated. In everyday life, probably because everyone else is yelling, we are so scared to get into an argument that we're willing not to engage at all. Contempt has replaced conversation. My mission in life. My mission in life. Here it comes. I feel a through line coming on. Is to help us disagree productively, to find ways to bring truth to light, to bring new ideas to life. I think, I hope that there is a model for structured disagreement that's kinder, mutually respectful, and assumes a genuine desire to persuade and be persuaded. So essentially, what she believes is that there's a model for structured disagreement that assumes、uh, that we can persuade and be persuaded, and that sets up then the model that she's going to show us. That's essentially the solution. So what she does after this then is goes to story. She's like, "All right, let me take you back." And she goes back to a little personal story about her, about how she started debate, and she made all the mistakes and blah blah blah. But what she did was she gave us a mini version of her talk up front that pulls us in, and we go like, "Ah, I get it. I get the problem. I see where we're going. I'm hooked." And then we get story after that. So it's like it's super entertaining, y'all. Like, not only is it like engaging, but there's like an entertaining element to to this, right? And、um, I think we forget that that at the that at the end of the day, we have a captive audience in front of us that also wants to like have a good time. Um, I want I want to say one more thing about this, which is that I want to ask this question to you. Um. Do you everything that you just saw and heard from Julia? Is she is she a credible speaker? Would you say like, oh, that's a credible person? Does she hold credibility? Yes. Yes. Now we don't know. We don't know like what her education is. You know, I told you something about her, but forget that. She hasn't given us her resume. None of that. What makes her credible? Confidence. Good. What else? Precision. Precision. I like that. What else? If you can diagnose someone's problem better than they can, they'll automatically and unconsciously feel that you have the the solution. It's clear.、Um, I'll also say, well, hold on. Let's take a break there. I want to hear from at least one other person. What? What? What else?、Krista. Yeah, I think her confident、uh, tone of voice. Good, good. One of the things she she does incredibly well is that she's unequivocal. Public discourse is broken. Okay. Was there any room in there for like, well, at certain times of the month, it's more broken than others?、Uh, no, there is a strong statement, right? It is what it is. She takes a side. She takes a position, and I want you to think about that as you're as you're developing, right? Sometimes we. In in normal conversation or at work or wherever, we're always thinking about, oh well, who's who's not going to believe what I just said, or who am I leaving out, or you know, there's room for that in your talk, but you need to take a strong position where someone will say, well, I don't know, well, that's not true, because then you have to prove it to us. So remember that that sort of. Statement is also what draws us in, and will make you credible if you prove it to us.、Mm. All right. So let's try、um, one more. Oh, I probably have another one in here. I don't want to lie to you. 
Brianna, did you hear any of that or is it still kind of muddled for you? No, I couldn't hear anything. So it's okay. Hopefully in the playback, <laughs> I will hear something. it looked like you were just staring. So I'm like, that's how we get the audience right off. <laughs> <You're> so uncomfortable. <laughs> Such a oh, great shoot. strategy. Well, so I'll do okay. I'll do my best to um to to kind of give you the play by play, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, here we go. All right, Julian Treasure. The human voice. It's the instrument we all play. It's the most powerful sound in the world, probably. It's the only one that can start a war or say, I love you. All right, the human voice. It's the instrument we all play. It's the only one that can start a war or say, I love you. What is that? What did he just do? Emphatic statement. Startling statement, right? It brings us in. It's, a, it's like, oh my goodness. Like, oh, that's true. Hmm. Now let's see what comes next. Human voice. It's the instrument we all play. It's the most powerful sound in the world, probably. It's the only one that can start a war or say, I love you. And yet many people have the experience that when they speak, people don't listen to them. Why is that? And yet many people have the experience that when they speak, people don't listen to them. Why is that? All right, so now we have uh, uh, the startling statement very quickly followed by the problem statement. Again, these are these are stylistic, um, but I personally like problem statements that happen very quickly. And then essentially he asks a question. Now, why is that? And it it really causes us to go like, yeah, why is that? That is true. That has that does happen. Like we don't we are often not heard. And yet our voice can also be very powerful at the same time. So I don't want to go through um, too much of this because Brianna is going to get real bored real fast. But <laughs> actually, I had a come to Jesus moment. Thanks to Stephanie. So <laughs> I figured out how to press a button and we're on. So okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Love it. Love it. Okay. So. I'll just I'll just give it to you like this. The way that Julian then does it is he gives us he's the the guy that kind of gives us like the steps like he's like, all right, one, you know, here's here's the seven deadly sins of like communicating and here's how we can communicate better. And he doesn't actually give us the through line until the end. This is another choice. <clears throat> some some speakers or and or speaker coaches will tell you that a through line should be sort of like realized rather than stated like clearly. Um, personally, I I like it like stated um, rather than extrapolated or rather than waiting for it at the end. Again, in part, because this is such a short talk, it's going on the internet. The internet is a noisy place. But let's look real quick with how he wraps it. And this is like towards the end. This is really the the where we get the clear through line. So let's see what he does. Oops, sorry guys, let me back up. Yeah, obviously in environments which were actually fit for purpose or to make that a bit larger, what would the world be like? Damn it. Sorry y'all, sorry y'all. A bit larger. What would the world be like if we were creating sound consciously and consuming sound consciously and designing all our environments consciously for sound? That would be a world that does sound beautiful and one where understanding would be the norm. There it is. Understanding would be the norm. That's his whole through line. So he hits us in the beginning, startling statement about your voice. The problem is we're often not listened to. The solution is these tips that he gives us to communicate better. And the through line is essentially that he wants to create a world where understanding is the norm. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip over this one. This one happens to be, I, I want to recommend this talk, not just because um, this is one of my clients. She was selected as a, a TEDx editor's pick 
Her name's Carlene Savage. Um, it's a really brilliant talk. She's a hostage negotiator. And she actually reveals the through line like midway through. So one of the things that I intention I intentionally want to impart upon you is that there are different ways to do this. And what I'm showing you is that there are ingredients and the, the structure of it can be played with. Um, however, if you're not an experienced speaker, the form of it, of startling statement to problem, to through line, to building your problem, solution, call to action is a really great skeleton. And it really sets up your audience in a way where they're with you the whole time. Okay, so next. What's your through line? Now, I want, I want you to think of this in, again, one possible way to structure it. Um, you know, if this was Brene Brown, she'd say, we need to stop running away from vulnerability and we need to start leaning into it. You know, that's her, that's her version of it. So this can often give us a really clear kind of movement of where we are and where we need to be or where we should be going. So I want you all to try this. We need to stop blank and we need to start doing blank or start whatever. Fill that in for yourself based on what your talk is. And when you're done, I want you to pop it into the chat, please. Daniel, yes, I believe Stephanie is recording it. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Yes, she is, yay. Hi, Catherine, that's okay. It's being recorded. Oh, Brianna's on it. We need to stop living in fear and we need to start living through the lens of unconditional love. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Love that. Miko, we need to stop piecemeal approaches to wellness and start. Ah, <laughs> all right. I'll help you with it. I'll help you with it. We'll get there. Um, Catherine, stop fearing age and embrace possibilities. Love that. Who's up? Who's next? Steve, we need to stop chasing shiny objects and embrace the clarity that a mentor can provide. Oh, I like that. Catherine will be 80 when she speaks. Oh, birthday coming up. All right, who are we missing? Edward, Misha. We need to stop sleeping on our dreams and awaken to our potential. Very cool. Yes, yours can be backwards. Start protecting sequoias and stop suppressing fire. Interesting, cool. Misha, we need to stop running from the anxiety monster and start facing him. Cool. All right. Is that everybody or we got, is there still one coming? Edward. Oh, okay. Edward still. No sweat, man. Take your time. And Brianna, am I saying your name right? Is it Brianna or Brianna? 
You can call me uh, Brie or Brie. you is fine as well. <laughs> Brie. Okay. I like Brie. Let's do that. Oh, okay. So Edward, are you, you're more in the performance kind of side of things? Right on. He's bringing the E to our Ted. I love it. I love it. That's cool. I think, yeah, no matter what the medium is, I think we can argue that there's some kind of through line in it, even if there isn't words. Um, we need to stop stressing and start listening to the instrument, the ukulele, AKA the instrument of peace. Cool. <clears throat> love that. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do just give you some quick feedback um, and maybe have a, have one question for you um, about each of these. So Brie, we need to stop living in fear and start living through the lens of unconditional love. My feedback to you is, can we, can we, um, this is broad. If I asked you to tell me who this is for, um, even though a TED talk is for everyone, I want you to imagine that there's a particular circumstance where we're applying this. Who would that person, who would that person be? That's a real question. Um, people, which I would feel like majority of people who are programmed to live in fear and negative based thinking, because that's most of our society, we automatically go into fear and negative thinking. So I want to say for everyone, but like mm. maybe 10% that have already conditioned themselves um, yeah. enough to think positively. So that's good. Let me ask it a different way. Um, can you? pick um, a fear, even if, even if the talk is still going to be pretty broad, can you pick a, a common fear? Failure. Okay. So that narrows it down, right? And makes it to where now I could see myself in it. Um, not that I can't see myself in this. I'm just sort of like more interested when we have a little bit more specificity. Okay. Got it. Uh, Miko, we need to stop piecemeal approaches to wellness and start. All right. So yeah, let's play with this a little bit. What, tell me what the solution is rather than piecemeal. What, what is your solution going to be? What's, what's that thing that we can do? Is there a tool or talk to me? Well, it's, um, comprehensive human centered approach, but that's so wordy. I didn't know how to make it sound better <laughs> yeah so um so comprehensive uh and start and like here's here's an example there's um um one of my clients talks is called the the danger of a single solution and it was a play on that other ted talk um the danger of a single story but um, what her takeaway was essentially is that, especially when it comes to big problems, we like hearing, we like to think that there could be a simple solution. And often that's what plays well in, you know, media or public discourse. This idea that like, ah, oh, we just need to do this, right? But that's dangerous, mm -hmm. actually. And that was her point. And, and for, think, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no. And I think that there's a parallel here to yours, which is essentially that um, there needs to be a more comprehensive approach. And then that's just, that's essentially what you're going to show us. However, just remember that in a 10 to 12 minute talk, we do need to wrap that up, you know, in a tight package. And for context, her talk is going to be so personal and so deep and so moving she is a former assistant da yes. and has a lot of experience with sex trafficking and human trafficking and the title of her talk is the illusion of off duty and Indeed. how there are so many people in such very important roles that need their own health and wellness as well and hurts i'm just so so looking forward 
to her talk and she has just an incredible story and her through line and the personal connection of it is going to floor people and her bravery and her message is really yeah. incredible. So I know we will definitely narrow it down and she has more specifics. So I'm really Indeed. excited. Indeed. Yeah. Miko and I actually had a chance to to chat and I'm looking forward to it too. It's, it's going to be amazing. Um, okay. Hope that was helpful, Miko. Uh, Catherine, stop fearing age and embrace possibilities. I mean, I, 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 I like it. I get it. I don't, I don't know that I would mess with that too much. I would say the only question I have, and maybe it's more of a curiosity is, you know, what are those possibilities? You know, I'm like, okay, cool. What's happening over there? Um, I like it the way it is. I think you did a great job. Do you have any questions for me, Catherine? No, I don't have any questions for you. I, okay. I, I think, uh, I think it's a big fear in the culture and, um, you know, life is long and I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love the the shape of this talk. I think it's going to be amazing. Thanks. Okay, Steve, we need to stop chasing shiny objects and embrace the clarity that a mentor can provide. Again, I think this is, I think, I think that's a solid, solid through line. I get it. I like, to me, I see, I see the shape of the talk. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious if there's a, a, a a particular audience you're thinking of because mentor is broad and like a meant like you know is this for I mean for the through line it doesn't really matter but just out of curiosity like is this are you thinking of this for everyone or are you thinking of like a particular audience that 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 needs mentors like for example like uh, young people you're on mute there Steve about that there you go uh, years ago first of all small business in america is broken you know like i can go into the statistics as far as 80 percent of small businesses fail within the first five years the next five fail in the next five years and that's the equivalent of like saying let's take a trip to antarctica and our guide tells us hey you know just to let you know you know 80 percent of you are going to die on the way over there and then those of you who survive 80 percent of those are going to die on the way back it kind of puts you some things in perspective. But to answer your question, everyone needs a mentor. And how I came about this was kind of a hard way. Back years and years ago, I was a general contractor at a marble and granite company. And I knew that I needed help as a businessman. There were a lot of things I just didn't understand. But here was my problem. Who could I talk to? I talked to my wife at the time. And she'd be like, I told you, she just got a job. Can't talk to my employees. Can't talk to my customers. Can't talk to my friends because they didn't really know how to run a business. And other business owners really, you know, a lot of times they're too busy doing their own stuff. Yeah. So here's what I did. I, I read a book called The E-Myth, and then I read all of Michael Grover's stuff. And then I signed up for a one-year vocational MBA program with a coach that I worked through. The problem with it was my coach had never run a business. So all he was doing is working off a script. And it was like 1500 bucks a month. It wasn't cheap. Yeah. So I realized at that time... The most important thing that anybody can do is to find a mentor to help them in their business. So it doesn't have to be somebody you pay for. Got it. Because entrepreneurial skills convey. For example, let's say you have an uncle who runs a very successful restaurant. His skills in running that restaurant can convey to helping you run your business as well. Yeah, he's going to have to make some adjustments, of course. But the bottom line is that the benefit of a mentor is that they're dispassionate. They have dispassionate objectivity to where they're able to to look at you, to look at your scenario without getting emotionally involved and help you to, to walk through those weeds that, that we're so close to sometimes it's difficult to see. Yeah, so that's, no, this that's is great. Right. This is great, Steve. The the uh, through line that's spot on. Totally get it. I think, yeah, if you're going if you're going to use specific examples and that totally makes sense. So I wouldn't change anything. Well done. Thank All you. right, Garza, we need to stop sleeping on our dreams and awaken to our potential. Yes, totally, um, totally see the shape of this one. This is this is in the motivational realm. And so I would just caution you that um, give when it comes to the solutions and the tools, 
you know, try to bring in things that are tangible. And so, so that it's not just inspirational or motivational because it has the way that this, it's shaped right now, it can go that, that direction. Uh, but it's beautifully written through line. Well done. Thank you very much. Krista, can mine be backwards? Yes. Start protecting sequoias and stop suppressing fire. Like this is, I mean, like not only is it clear, but it also breeds a little curiosity. I love that. I love that she played with the the form of the through line. I totally get it. And I'm like ready to grab my popcorn and listen to this talk. I think it's, I think it's awesome. Wouldn't change anything. Um, Misha, we need to stop running from the anxiety monster and start facing ham. Yes. Good. Um, I love it. I actually rewrote it. Um, to be Okay, go for it. It says stop avoiding and covering up the symptoms of anxiety and start facing it and healing the root cause. I like, I like that. The second version you gave me is a little less fun, but I, yeah. it gives me more <laughs> specificity. Um, yeah. And so, my talk is supposed to be fun. So it's, it's, it, you know, anxiety is a rough, it's a hard topic. And as soon as you say yeah. the word anxiety, everybody, be, you know, gets anxiety. So yes. those, those that have anxiety start to get it. So I'm bringing the, you know, the comedy to it to kind of like that. Yeah. So it reminded me of this talk by Tim Urban um, on procrastination. And he talks about the procrastination monkey, I think that's on your back or something like that. And in a similar way makes, you know, like a topic that's not so fun, makes it very fun. And he's a super engaging speaker. And I agree that like, if you're going to talk about something like anxiety, that like making it playful would be very beneficial. So again, well done. <clears throat> Edward, I think this is cool. Um, yeah, I mean, if this is if this is like a performance, then like, yeah, man, my my feedback is just like when in order to convey through line and performance, there's there's emotion behind it, right? And so I just encourage you to like bring that to the stage um, so that people can can also feel feel your through line. Mm. Daniel, we need to stop killing the soil and start growing the soil. Food web, interesting. Okay, cool, man. So what is, real quick, what is food web? Um, so basically it's, uh, so sorry, I'm kind of balancing right here. My dog is kind of not doing a hundred percent. Oh, that's okay. But yeah, it's basically a uh, a community in the soil. So the bacteria, the fungi, the predators that eat them, uh, super important in nature. They are kind of responsible for everything. Uh, they're kind of like the basis of of everything essentially, and everything kind of grows upon it. Um, but we kind of forget about it nowadays because no one has a microscope, and if oh. you can't see, they pay attention to it. And uh, yeah, it's kind of leading to unfortunate overuse of fertilizers, herbicides, fungicides, water use, etc. Very cool. Yeah. So what I would say is um, like the, the through line is great. Just thinking about your talk. Um, I would just make sure that like it, you're also speaking to the person that like has no idea about this at all. Right. So like, they're just, they're, they're kind of like just coming into this for the first time, but then also going like, Oh, what can I do? Is there something like simple I can do? So maybe in like your calls to action, like there could be one that is like more like systemic and then there could be one that's more like practical for um, for everyday folks, if that makes sense. Yeah, appreciate the input. Thank you so much. You got it. Okay, all right. So I just wanted to invite you all, um, since you're all here on this call and you're all preparing, like I will, I'll give you a quick um, brainstorm. Um, and so what I wanna do actually is give you a little link and my my calendar is pretty slammed, so I'm going to give you this other link that um, should have some spots open. It will, not should. And if you want to connect with me, what we'll do is we can go through your idea, go through a quick um, outline of it um, so we can see it. And then um, I also, of course, would love to help you get there. And so I could either provide coaching or me and my head writer, Steve, can also help you with the writing. 
And so it will always have your voice in it. Like you always have to put that in, um, but we can help you in, in both ways. And so book a, book a call in there with me um, and would love to, yeah, just be a, be a part of your journey to the stage. Y'all have some amazing messages. Clearly you've been selected for a reason. So congratulations again.